everyone, and I'd like to welcome you to my very first episode, episode one of Karen Knits. A um, little bit about myself. My name is Karen. I'm a Canadian who is living and working in the United States. My husband John and I live in South Central Pennsylvania, where we're right close to right close to the border of Maryland. Uh, just a little note, I'm really excited to be doing this and I'm also kind of nervous and feeling really awkward about sitting here in a room all by myself talking to a camera. If you're hearing weird noises out in the background or any kind of ambient noises, our apartment is right on um, a main drag through town so you're probably going to hear some traffic. It's an old apartment building and we have not the best soundproofing in the building. So you probably will hear some traffic here and there during the during the podcast. So today is Saturday, September 15th, uh, 2018. While I'm taping this, we'll see what day I actually get this finished with the editing and get it actually posted onto YouTube. Um, so that I'm said that already. Podcast. Okay, so what this podcast is going to be about um, I've called it Karen Knits. It will be the vast majority of what I will be focusing on during this podcast will be knitting. I, um, oh, here's a nice awkward, awkward silence. Um, so the podcast will be primarily about knitting. It'll also have some focus on, on spinning, which is something I'm just starting to wade into that swamp. In another podcast I will show you I have my great-grandmother's antique spinning wheel. If I can figure out the editing trick I will add in a, a picture of it here but I will spend some time in an upcoming video where I will actually videotape and show you a lot of the detail on the spinning wheel. Uh, she brought it, my great-grandmother brought it to Canada from Iceland when she immigrated there in 1905. So it is an antique spinning wheel. It has all of its parts. It, um, it is something that it is usable and I do plan to learn how to spin so that I can use the same spinning wheel that my great-grandmother used many, many years ago and used for hours and hours and hours of use. So anyways, that was a little bit of a tangent there, sorry. Um, so the, the podcast will be primarily about knitting. I will talk a little bit about spinning as I'm learning how to spin. I will also be spending some time in this podcast talking about dyeing yarn, which is another hobby I really enjoy. I have had in the past a little bit of yarn available for sale on Etsy. I don't think there's anything in the shop right now. But it is something that maybe down the road I might try to sell a little bit more as an indie dyer. We'll see how that goes, and if time permits. I also do a fair bit of um, knit designing. On Ravelry you can find me as Karen Burr Designs. Um, you can also find me on Ravelry as Econ Nerd, which is my, uh, my everyday username, but my designer page is Karen Burr Designs. I design mostly socks and cowls. I've designed a few other um, accessories, but primarily it's, it, it is socks and cowls, which are a lot of what I do knit. Um, my favorite things to knit are socks. I've knit between the ones I've designed and other people's patterns that I've knit. I've knit over a hundred pair of socks now, probably in the last I'll have to check the date on that. I don't remember when I actually first started. It's probably been about five, six years that I've been knitting socks now, give or take a, a couple years, but I'll, I'll double check that on Ravelry later and see exactly when it was that I, I knit my first, very first pair of socks. So anyway, so I also plan on doing a little bit of podcasting about crochet. I learned to crochet before I learned to knit. I actually learned to do I learned to do both when I was in my teens. I primarily crocheted through my 20s and 30s and in the last maybe 10 or so, 10-15 years or so, I've 
kind of been transitioning over to where now I, I mostly knit. I do do a little bit of crochet, uh, mostly for um, charity um, pet blankets that I donate to Humane Society and other pet shelters. I'll probably talk about that in a, a future podcast as well and show you some of the ones I've done. Uh, work through what pattern I use for them. It's a very simple pattern. I also hope to be doing or spending some time talking about sewing. I used to sew a lot when I was younger. I haven't done a lot lately, but it is something I really do want to. I want to shake the dust off my sewing machine, give it a go over, get it cleaned up. Um, tuned up and do some more sewing. It's something I really enjoy. I'd like to start dabbling in quilting. Um, probably not the big full-size quilts, but um, smaller ones. I have sewn one small table runner, so I've done, or quilted, sorry, one small table runner, but it is something I'd like to dabble with a little bit more. And I'd also like to spend some time looking at um, making some project bags. You'll see in a little bit my, <laughs> when, we, when we go through my works in progress, we'll see the, um, I, my project, I don't have project bags. And it's something that I think might be kind of fun to have. Uh, we'll see if that's somewhere where I go. I'm also very interested in doing different art things. I'm not necessarily that good at it, but it's something that I enjoy. It is pleasant, it's stress relieving, um, it's just something, I, it, it's fun, I like it. I do a lot of um, work with uh, mixed media. I've worked with um, acrylics, watercolors. I've done a fair bit with um, art journaling, um, some Bible journaling. It's just a fun pastime that I just enjoy. It kind of comes and goes. A few of these type of things might make some small appearances in this podcast, but as I said, primarily it's going to be knitting related uh, with some crochet thrown in there and probably a little bit of sewing as I as I start to uh, progress with that a little bit more. Um, let, me, let me just check, sorry, let me check my notes. Um, I will be posting, speaking of Speaking of notes, I will be posting some show notes um, down below later on once I, once I get this done. Um, I'll have links to the different projects I talk about and the different yarns I talk about. Um, any of my social media information I will post again down below as well. So now that we've gone through this, like long drawn out uh, kind of introduction basically what my podcasts what I envision them to be is all it's just gonna be something very informal I'm expecting this is going to be a pile of fun um, but sit back have a cup of tea this is a cup that I bought at Christmas tree shops quite a while ago absolutely love this cup um, so either a cup of tea, I'm primarily a tea drinker, um, but have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, whatever other beverage you might enjoy. Uh, sit back, enjoy. Um, I appreciate that you're taking a chance on coming to sit down and, and watch this brand new podcast. Um, but typically what I want to do in my podcast, so I'll spend a little bit of time looking at projects that I've finished. So whatever I finished since the previous episode. There will be some times when if I'm looking for some filler I might bring in some of my um, some of the objects I've fin finished objects I've had in the past, some of my designs that I've had. I'll probably show off some of those as well. Um, once I've talked about any finished objects I might have, I want to spend some time looking at what I've worked on in the, the past week or two since I've podcast last time. So any of my new work in progress. This week what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all of my works in progress. Don't worry, I typically I don't have a lot of works in progress going at one time. I find that for me it's stressful and I do find that I kind of pick one project and 
one or two and I just I focus on that um, if I have too many things that I've cast on all at once I really do find that several of them just kind of sit to the side and they they don't get the love they deserve so I do tend to only work on a few things at any given time um, and then if I have any stash acts let me try that one again. If I have any new stash, stash acquisition. That was tough to spit out. Anyway, if I have new stash, I will show that off. I typically don't buy a whole lot of yarn, although this weekend coming up might, might not be evidence of that. But um, I have a lot of stash already, and that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that is something that I do want to um, I want to spend a bit of time in one of my podcasts I will go on a tour through my stash and show you what I have and what I'm working on and maybe think about some of the things that I want to do with that yarn in the future um, and then I might have a section at the end where I just talk about random stuff that's just going on in life I potentially will be throwing in a few little bits and pieces with some of the art side of it as well. Um, I'll also throw in any things that do with spinning, um, dyeing yarn, any of my sewing crafts that ha if I'm doing any sewing or crocheting, I'll fit that in with the um, either finished objects or works in progress. So I want to first off show you, I, since this is a brand new podcast, there's nothing you aren't familiar with any of the projects I've been working on in the past and any of the things that I've finished recently but my most recent finished object are my <laughs> I'm gonna have to work on this pronunciation they're from their pair of socks they are the Flibbert Gibbet socks they're by Lisa Ross Lisa K Ross they are the stage 5 socks from the tour Tour de Sock 2018. I finished these last week, or I finished them on the 8th of September. They were in the fifth stage for Tour de Sock. Um, if you check on Ravelry, if it's um, an event you're not familiar with, it's uh, basically um, a knitting competition where they will issue a new pattern every, usually I think it's every 10 days. And there's certain point levels that are allocated for finishing the socks within a specified period of time. Um, this time around I finished I think two pair of socks within the allocated time and actually got points for them. Um, this pair oops, <laughs> this pair are um, a pair that I finished but it was after the uh, the time period was done and I have you'll see in a little bit I have one other pair of socks from Tour de Sock that I'm working on now and I I do hope to have finished in within the next hopefully within the next less than a week hopefully if I'm podcasting again in a week you'll be able to see another finished project um, so here are these ones the Flippert Gibbet. So, I, I don't think I mentioned already, I really enjoy knitting, I love knitting cables. And as we go through my, the finished object I have now and my um, ongoing, um, ongoing projects, it'll be clearly obvious that I'm a major fan of cables. I love working with cables. But I just wanna give you a little bit more of a close up of these. They are, have a real, oops, a really cute little cable design uh, with little lace panels in there. But they're a really pretty little design. I really enjoyed working these. Um, I'll take this off so I can show you a little bit. They were knit top down. They have a cute little scalloped edge on them, which I thought was really pretty. It's a little bit floppy but it's still it's, it's really cute if we look down the front the the cable paneling the cable and lace panel goes all the way down 
the front. I opted for just using a plain, uh, a plain toe. The pattern repeats along the back of the sock. It has a heel flap. And instead of having the gussets coming down the side, it has what is known, I believe known as a riverbed gusset, where the gusset decreases happen down the bottom of the heel, and the, the decreases are tucked in there. It's a really neat little design. I, I really like the, um, the riverbed um, gusset. And they were, they were a really fun knit. The yarn I used for this, forgot to mention that off the top, the yarn that I used for this is, um, I dyed this myself. It was a one of a kind, so I, I, I don't remember what I, how I did it. But it's a, a little bit tonal, it's mostly in grays and light blues. Um, but it was, it was a, it's a, a um, a little colorway that I really enjoyed and I'd like to maybe try to figure out if there's a way I can replicate it. It does show a little bit of the micro striping along the bottom. You can see when it's just in the plain vanilla, which is I, I think is a really neat a neat colorway. I, I really I really like that one. So that's it for my finished objects this this podcast. I've got a pile of other finished objects but I said this is the most recent finish I've had so I'll probably dig up a few others to to show you in in later podcasts but for now that's just one of the the one I finished most recently um, the other one that I'd mentioned sorry I'm just get, getting my getting this from the side here without getting tangled up and you'll see in just a second when I show you this um, when I do my socks I like to knit them two at a time, but in tandem. So what I'll do is I'll, and typically I, I enjoy knitting my socks top down. It is the way, I, the first pair of socks I made were top down, and I've just kind of stuck with that and I'm more comfortable with that. I have no, I'm not against toe up socks, but it's just one I've just not had nearly as much practice with that. Um, and probably the socks have probably made more than 70, probably 85% of them have been top down. But anyway, so when I'm knitting my, my socks, I like doing them two at a time in tandem. So I'll knit the cuff on one, and then I'll move over and I'll do the cuff on the second one. Then I'll go down the leg on one, then the leg on the other, then the heel, and I'll continue back and forth. And that way I find I don't have a problem with second sock syndrome. Um, I finish them both at the same time. So if there's any issues I have doing the heel flap or the heel turn on one, it's still fresh in my mind when I go back and work on when I do the, the second one immediately afterwards. So the other pair of socks that I'm, I have one pair of socks that are on the go right now and these ones are the other pair of socks from the uh, from Tour de Sock. And these were the stage three socks, and the the name of the pattern is Bicycle Race, and the pattern is by Heidi Nick. The yarn I used for this is Cascade Heritage in the colorway Christmas Red. So these ones are uh, I'm going to get tangled up here. They are another heavily cabled pattern. I'm part way through. I finished the the heel turn on both and I'm working my way down the foot on each of them. I'm a little farther along on on this this sock and this one I'm I'm cruising along on there. So just to I'm tangled up. There's also beads on here which is an, a fun little detail but if you see here you can see that there's a really pretty, pretty cable pattern running all the way down the foot, or all the way down the leg and along the front of the foot. On the back, and you can see, I think you can see, yep, yeah, you can see the beads tucked in along the leg. The back is a slightly different cable design, and it continues down into the heel flap, and then the heel turn goes underneath the heel and then continues on. 
So with these, what was fun with this design was that once you went down, as you're working down the heel flap, you were doing increasing, the gusset increases down the back of the heel. And then once you got to the end of the heel flap, where the gussets had already been incorporated, you did the heel turn and then joined back in the, and then once you did the heel turn, you joined back in the round and down the foot you go. So I thought that was a really neat detail. Um, it's a nice, nice detail not having to uh, pick up the stitches on the gusset. It's probably not my favorite task when it comes to knitting socks, but I do like the fit of a heel flap and gusset um, and heel turn for my own for my own foot, my own shape of my own foot. So those are my bicycle race socks. Um, so again, they were a they were done in Cascade Heritage. The, um, it was a tour de sock pattern. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, you probably are, I, I might be able to edit this out, but where we live, we are about half a mile, quarter mile, half mile down the road is the hospital. Um, a little bit closer is the police station. And if you go about a block down the road uh, behind us, not even a block, half a block to a block down the road, there's a fire station. So we hear a lot of sirens around here. It's not a huge town, but there's still quite a few. So that was an ambulance that just went, just went past now. So hopefully there won't be other, other sirens coming along right behind it, but it's just a, a heads up that I hope I'm able to edit that out most of the time, but it's quite likely that you are going to hear sirens in the background when I'm, when I'm taping. But Nah, that's just the way it goes. Um, so since I had been working on two um, heavily cabled patterns, I decided I wanted something that was completely, um, completely mindless and nice, easy stocking at um, design to work on. So I'm usually, I'm usually a day late and a dollar short on getting onto all these different bandwagons. If I'm working on a certain project that's, it's chances are it was really popular months and months and months ago and everyone else has finished making them and then all of a sudden I'm just like, well, oh, that's kind of neat. And then I, I eventually join up on there. So there'll be designs that have thousands and thousands of patterns made. And then I come along after there's been so many, I, I, I'm never early into the bandwagon. I, I come along after everybody else is finished. So part of the advantage is I get to look at um, any tips and tricks that other people have. So anyway, long way of telling you that I wanted something because I've got several. I just had finished the, the those light blue cabled socks and I was working on these red ones. I just wanted something that was relatively um, straightforward, plain stocking at. I can just sit and work on it without having to put in a, a ton of thought. So I have finally got around to casting on the um, Sock Head Slouch Hat by Kelly McClure. The yarn I'm using, so this is what I, I have the, I say cuff, the, the brim is almost complete now. So that's how far I am on it. I think I'm at about three, I'm between, I'm a little over three inches now, maybe getting closer to the four inches that is the, the design for doing the brim. I'm using a yarn that I dyed myself and it's a long, a long gradient. I thought this would be perfect for this hat. So it started with this darker blue and then it's going to transition into gradually lighter and lighter and lighter. Um, oops, shades of blue. So I think I might not have the transition the best from this shade to the next one, but when I when I post again next week, you'll get to see how much more I've done in this, and then I should have the transition into the next color. So that's my second work in progress I have going. Let me just pop that over here. Um, another pattern I started and I just started the I just started that pattern just about a week ago 
um, the 9th of September. So that's a fairly recent project I, I started working on. Another work in progress I have, and this one I haven't worked on much at all lately. Um, a, because it was warm in the summertime and this is, it will be a nice big heavy, heavily cabled um, cardigan once it, it's finally finished, but I, I cast it on back in the 3rd of February. So I cast this on a while ago and I honestly don't think I've done anything on it in probably about four months. Uh, what it is is the Row Cardigan by Michelle Wong and I'm knitting it in, and this is just, oh, the cables, I love all the cables in here. As I said, I, I enjoy working with cables. And this, I'm almost done, this is the back. I'm almost finished the back. I probably only have like an inch or two. I, I think I'm at almost at the point where I'm ready to do the, the shoulder shaping. So it's, it's very close to having the back finished. But now that we're getting into September, we're getting closer to fall, I really do want to get back to working on this some more. I really do want to um, get this finished so once it does start getting a lot cold, well, it doesn't get that, I'm a Canadian, so the cold in Pennsylvania, uh, it's, I don't think it's that cold. But this cardigan will be fantastic for wearing in December, January, February, and we've got the coldest months here. So uh, this is one that I'm hoping I can show you some more progress on this fairly soon. Um, I really want to finish my bicycle race socks first. That's my highest priority because that's the one that's closest to completion. But then I really do want to get this back into my rotation and really start working on, on this a lot more. Um, oh yeah, the yarn I'm using for this, I'm using uh, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Superwash and it's bare. Um, and so it's just in the, the off-white color. I'm, I might dye it as a whole finished, when it's entirely finished, I might, um, I might dye the whole thing, um, but I, sus I really do suspect that I'm going to leave it bare, um, leave it. I do like this color, I think it's, it's nice, um, and it's just a nice uh, light neutral. So when I was talking before about wanting to make project bags, this lives in my handy dandy Rubbermaid type tote. Actually, this is a Sterilite tote. Um, a lot of my projects, I keep them in here, but I kind of like that because I can stack them up nice and neatly and I can see what's in there. Even though I, I love the project bags, they're just, they're so pretty, but I can see what's in here easily and it reminds me that it sits beside me by my desk and it reminds me that I, I have this project there that I need to get back to work on sometime. So that's one of my works in progress. Another work in progress I have that I, this one I'm actually embarrassed to say, I cast this one on July 24th. 2014. So I've been working on this for four years. Um, I'm nowhere close to done. I don't know about when I'll ever finish this. Uh, I do eventually want to finish it, although I'm kind of rethinking what it's going to eventually be when, when it is done. But it is the, the mitered square sock leftover sock yarn. I call it my scrap, my sock scrap yarn is what I've been calling it. And, but that's all I have. It's, it's not very big. It's nowhere close to, to blanket. And I'm holding this up from, I, I'm nowhere close. I'm almost thinking what I might do with it is go a little bit wider than this and either finish it off and have it as um, a triangular, just like a triangular shawl. 
I might do that because the the odds that I'll finish it before <sighs> before way too much time, like another four years goes past. Um, I might have a better chance of actually finishing it if I just put it into make it into like a triangular a triangular shawl and then I can just and just wear it over my shoulders when I'm sitting this apartment gets cold in the winter time um, like I say it's not very soundproof and it's also a little bit drafty it's a big old apartment uh, so I might just want it as something that I can just throw over my shoulders so that might be something that I do with it. Maybe I'll just get get it to a decent sized triangle or a decent sized square and then I can just fold it over and put it across my shoulders. So that's also and there's a whole it's got oodles and oodles of little leftover yarn balls from from previous projects. So that's my my fourth work in project work in progress, and then as I was mentioning with my my fancy project bags, I keep things in Ziploc bags, um, and this is a project. And I'm kind of wondering about your advice. I've asked a few people about this before, and some of them are on the same same wavelength as I am with this. I this is. A single sock. It's completed. Uh, the ends have not been tucked in. But this is the pattern is called Lambs and Chickens and Bunnies. Oh my! It was from Sock Madness in. So I didn't write down. Oh, I started in 2017. Um, so sock, sock Madness 11. And this is round the round three sock. So this I got knocked out of the the knitting competition. Um, on this this design uh, in in 2017, the pattern is by Ross Clark, Ross or Rose Clark, um, and I have one sock that's finished. I finished it probably in April or May 2017. I've never got round to casting on the second one, and I really don't have any motivation. I have no no desire to cast on the second one. It's my color work needed some, some practice. It's the floats are too tight. There's no way that I'm going to get this on my or over my foot, over my heel, and then up my leg. It's it's not going to happen. So whether I finish a second sock and give them away to somebody. Or I'm almost thinking I'll block it, tuck in the tails, and maybe I'll maybe I'll just use it as a piece of decoration. I'll get it into um, a sock blocker of some sort, and I'll just use it as art. Hang it up in my in my craft room here somewhere. Um, so I'm almost leaning towards that. I think that's what I'm going to do with it. I, it's, it's a half object right now. There's one sock complete, but I really don't see myself ever ever coming back to make the second one. So I really am. So I'd like kind of, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think I should try to finish it, do a second one, or should I get it blocked out nicely and put it on display and have it as a, a pretty decoration in my home. Anyway, so that's it. I have and I have all the whoops, all the the yarn. The yarn that I used for these, these were all um, yarns that I dyed. They're the bigger the sorry the the small ones are all leftover um, the scraps from other I made a full pair of socks with the rest of the yarn and then this is just the these are just the the leftovers that I was using for the color work portion so I'm um, I'm thinking I probably uh, I'll never finish these and I, I think I'll do them up as as something decorative for for my home but we'll see so I have a total of five works in progress 
I'm itching to cast something else on, but I know if I cast on something new, something else is going to go farther down the list. So the, that last pair of socks I showed you, they're never going to, I'll never come back to them. Um, my mitered square blanket, it's going to take me even longer to come back to it and do more on that one. Um, so I'm really resisting the urge to cast on anything more. Um, particularly until, at least I have to finish the, the bicycle race socks. Get those done first before I, I even think of casting something else on. Even though I'm, I'm itching, but I'll try to restrain myself. So those are all my works in progress. Like I said, I have a total of five. Um, I do find if I have too many works in progress at one time, it does, I do find that stressful. Um, and I do find that too many of them just, they just sit there patiently waiting for me to remember that they're there and patiently waiting for me to come back and show them a bit of love again. Um, so I usually do, you're probably not going to find me having oodles and oodles of, um, of projects on the go. Although I will be talking in a bit, there's a few projects that I really do want to get casting on, um, but I'm, I'm going to hold off on that. But I'll talk about that in just a little bit once I show you some of the new yarn that I've had. So another segment I want to incorporate into this podcast is to talk about any stash acquisition, any new stash that I'm bringing into my home. Whether it might be yarn, um, some podcast down the road I might show other things that I've bought that... I think are, are fun and interesting. I might show fabrics that I bought for um, project bag ideas so that I, I'm not using that for a project bag. Um, but uh, those are things I might show you. But so today I want to show you, I don't normally buy, like I mentioned at the beginning, I don't normally buy a lot of stash. I have, I have a lot already, so I don't really, I don't feel the need to buy a lot of stash, a lot more yarn. Although I will admit there are quite a few, quite a few times that I'd like to buy more. But um, I have I have a lot with me, or have a lot already. So I want to talk about I have one, two, four, six, six skeins of yarn that I bought in the last couple days. I also have an order from Knit Picks that should be delivered on. Monday or Tuesday, uh, but I'll talk. I'll show you those once once I get them, and once I, I'll, I'll show you those on my next podcast. But one of the first ones I had, I went to. Well, my husband and I stopped in. There's a little thrift store that's just down the street from us. It's just behind our apartment, just like half a block away. So we stopped in there on Thursday. Yeah, today's Saturday. On Thursday, we stopped in there. We looked around, and I, I always go over to... <laughs> oh, who's that? Ambulance is coming back. It's heading back to the hospital. That scared the living day out of me. Anyway, so... <laughs> The other day on Thursday, we stopped in the thrift store, and I, as as always, I headed over to the craft. Their little, they have a section where they put all their craft supplies and things on there, and so they have three or four drawers in a cabinet where they keep all their yarn. So I looked, and normally it's things like the Red Heart acrylics, um, a lot of different baby yarns, things like that that they have there, and I, I've never seen anything there that caught my eye or anything that I, I wanted to bring home with me or I had that I really was excited about until um, Thursday when we went in there. So I popped open the one drawer that had all the, the um, crochet thread in it and this was in there. I love it. Look at how loud that is. Oh my goodness. So this yarn is uh, Wild Hair, it's from Wild Hair Fiber Studio. It's in the pinnacle fingering and the color is called Neon Lights. So I looked online to find out a little bit more about it. 
and it's apparently a yarn that when you um, put it under black light, it glows. <laughs> like I got, I want that. I I have to have this. I will be making these into a pair of van probably vanilla socks. Um, it'll be something that I can really show off the the wild colors on here because it's certainly it's a wild variegated yarn. It is 100 grams, 460 yards. It's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And so I picked it up. So here's look a little closer at this. I'll actually let me show you the label. Oops, wrong way. I'm hoping you can see that. And so when I went to pay for it, I asked her how much was it? Twenty-five cents. I got this for a quarter. It is it is so nice and squishy. I, I love it. I don't think I've ever had such a good deal on a skein of yarn, ever. Um, so I'm really excited to to give this a try. I'm really excited to to get this um, into a pair of vanilla socks or probably vanilla socks. So that's 25 cent gorgeous skein of yarn so that was the, the one one skein I bought um, then yesterday I think it was yesterday yeah yesterday uh, I was in a Goodwill store I, I enjoy looking around thrift stores I love it um, occasionally I find something I really like there uh, more often than not it's I just I like looking around there to see what they have so I found this in my Goodwill store again usually there they have the red heart acrylics um, I have plenty of those already I use them to make um, pet blankets for uh, to donate to charity for um, uh, for pet shelters and things so I found a skein of opal I've never yet had the chance to knit with opal. Um, I've always wanted to, but it's just something I've just never had the chance to get my hands on it or just haven't, haven't bought it yet. So 100 grams, 425 meters. It's 75% virgin wool, 25% polyamide. Um, so it's in, oops. It's in nice neutral colors. It's mostly in grays, beige, off-white cream colors. So it's a nice masculine, um, sorry, it's in my eye. I mean, yarn fluff in my eye. Um, sorry about that. It's a nice masculine color. It's, um, it looks like it's been through a war zone. It's all bundled up. It's been tied up with. It's been tied. There's not. There's an elastic band wrapped around here. I'm gonna have to sit down and carefully. I'll probably put this back on my yarn onto a yarn swift. Um, wind it onto there so that it's. Oh, there's the end. I found the end. Um, but I'll, then I can get it into a nice hank so that it's is looking a little better um, it was two dollars so <laughs> I really struck struck a gold mine the last couple days looking at um, and thrift stores for yarn but anyways I'm thinking I'll probably these will probably be a pair of socks I'll probably make them and give them to my husband um, hopefully he hasn't wa I, if he's watching this he's probably lost interest <laughs> but he's probably lost interest by this point and he, he won't be watching this anymore um, I do find that the poor guy, I knit, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned earlier, I've knit over a hundred pair of socks and so far, I, I'm a very selfish sock knitter, um, a selfish knitter in general, but especially for socks, I, most of them I've, I keep for myself. So with, 
I made him a handful of pair of socks in heavier yarns that he's just worn as, as house slippers. And this just this past Christmas, I made him a pair of uh, fingering white socks. Um, so I'm thinking maybe though this yarn, I might make him another pair of socks with that. We'll see. Um, I'm not going to cast it on anytime soon. I'm, I've got other projects I want to, to finish up first. So that, but that's why I think I might have that earmarked for, for him for maybe Christmas present or birthday present. His birthday's not till next March. So the other yarns I bought, we went, um, yesterday we went and stopped in at a nearby uh, Tuesday morning store. And I found some yarns there. I found these two. It is um, Carlton Merino Sport or Merino Sport. It's 45% premium acrylic, 55% merino wool. They're 50 gram, 50 gram skeins, and. 148 yards so it's in a, a navy blue which is color one and um, a nice gray color which is listed as color three and I think what I'm going to do with these I signed up for the second year for Skin Gear Knits um, Cell Blue Mitten Club last year I made I only made one pair of so or socks <laughs> see I usually make socks I only knit one of the um, the mitten designs last year um, but I think these even though it's got a, a heavier um, acrylic count in it or percentage in it I might give these a try um, I know that this is not probably not the most suitable yarn for um, for color work but um, I think I, I, I think these are going to grow up to be a pair of um, color work mittens. It's they're the right size, um, good colors for contrasting. They'll look I think it'll look fantastic. So I think that's the plan for for these is they will be a pair of um, they'll go towards making one of um, Skin Gear Knits Silver Mitten um, Club Two patterns um, that'll be coming out. So there's. These are two that I just bought just yesterday. And I also yesterday at Tuesday morning bought uh, these two skeins of yarn. Uh, so it's in, this is uh, Voyager or Voyager yarn, um, Tahoe, Tahoe or Tahoe. It's listed as Tahoe yarn light. It is, oops, switching pages. 50 gram skeins, 107 yards each, and it's 100% wool. It's and the colors are brown and vanilla. And again, so 100% wool. This is a little bit more, a uh, little bit more, not scratchy, but it's it's certainly not super duper soft. It's it's not that bad. It's not too too bad, but I think this again in the a darker brown and the the cream or vanilla color I think these will be another I think these will be fantastic color work mittens as well um, paired together so I think these will be another one of the mittens in the the Selbu Mitten Club this year uh, whether I, I don't know which one so that, that'll, that'll be one of the things I think once I've cast off or bound off the um, Bicycle race socks. I think this is. I think I'll be casting on one or the other, either these two in one of the um, Selbu mitten patterns or the the blue and white or the blue and gray. I might cast those on into um, a, a pair of um, Selbu mittens. And then probably things that I might um, set aside and give away for Christmas gifts. I, I haven't decided yet or keep for myself. Um, haven't decided. So those are my new acquisitions. I do have um, an order of yarn coming in from Knit Picks. I ordered um, 
I don't even remember now what it was. There's a, a pretty blue colorway that's in a, a mohair mix type of yarn and several skeins of um, knit pick stroll in the bear, the, the bear yarn that I'm going to dye for making different things. But what I really wanted for those is that Stephen West has um, a mystery shawl knit along that's starting on the 1st of October. I've bought the, the pattern already, so I'm just impatiently waiting for it to come up. And I think it calls for five, four, five, six different colors, um, plus one that's a, a contrasty color and a contrasty texture. So it was, it was the one I think in the pattern the, the one they had in there I think was looking at uh, a mohair type yarn. So I think what I'll do with those is I will use the, the blue mohair type yarn I bought and dye the other, dye the other skeins to go, with, go together with it for uh, working on the, the mystery shawl. So that's why again I want to get some of these works in progress off the needles because I do have that cast on and want to start early October. I forget the exact date. I can't remember if it starts on the 1st of October or the first weekend in October. Either way. Um, so that is something I do want to, to cast on. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about the yarn, that yarn that I get. I'll talk about that next week or next time I podcast. So that about concludes this, this very first podcast of mine. What I hope to do with these podcasts is I hope that I'm able to do this once a week. If not once a week, it'll certainly be every two weeks. Um, part of that will depend on how much spare time I have for doing this. I, I work full time um, outside of the home, so I don't know if I mentioned this before, I work as a, a professor at a nearby university. And so I'm usually tied up and busy and I'm on campus uh, most days during the week and I do most of my knitting in the evenings and, and on the weekends or spare time, sometime in the, some in the morning before. I like to spend some time in the mornings before I go to work uh, doing some knitting, just kind of starts off the day really nice. Um, but if my schedule permits and I've got enough progress made on my projects, then I'm hoping that I can I can podcast every week. So I'm not sure how long it's going to take for me to edit this. <laughs> I suspect it's going to need a fair bit of editing. That's another skill I'm going to have to learn how to do. Cause I, I've never edited edited video clips before. So we shall see. We shall see how that works out. So I'm hoping I can get this posted later today. It's only a little bit past lunchtime right now. So it's early, early, early afternoon. It's only Eastern time at 12.45 right now. So I'm hoping I can get this posted up later today, maybe tomorrow. Um, I might go through and watch this and think, oh my goodness, this is horrible. <laughs> I, might, I might just scrap the whole thing and get myself another drink and sit down and talk some more. How long have I been talking? Oh my gosh, I've been on here for almost, I've been yakking for almost an hour. Oi, oi, oi. Okay, we're gonna have to edit some of this down because I really don't think I need my podcast to be in the hour range or more. But anyway, I'm gonna sign off now. This has been a blast. I've really enjoyed doing this. I thought it would be really awkward sitting here talking to myself. All, I'm in, all by myself in the apartment. Um, sitting in a room by myself, talking to myself to a camera. I, it feels weird, but it, it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to sign off now. Take care, everyone. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye now.